Hi everybody, it's me Waddles, but Bedrock. Recently, we've been talking a whole lot about Java Edition, and the nice thing about that is a lot of the features spill over to Bedrock, but not always. For example, the Warden. Did you know that Bedrock 1.19 did not have the w <laughs> Okay, I can't even say it. I can't even, that's not true. What is true is the fact that the Warden is pretty different on Java 1.19 compared to Bedrock. That's true right now, but not for long. In today's video, we're going to talk about 20 updates, big and small, coming to Minecraft Bedrock Edition very soon. Down below, comment what version of the game you mainly play. Drop a like while you're headed down there, and let's go. Our first update today is one of the biggest parody updates to make it to Bedrock Edition in years. When I intro it like that, if you've been following development, you know exactly what it is. Spectator mode. For almost all of the updates that we'll be talking about today, we know exactly when those updates will make it into the game. The Spectator is unfortunately not one of those updates. It's still a little bit unclear as to when Spectator mode will actually make it to the game, but when it does, uh, oh boy, when it does, everything changes. I mean, look, if you existed inside of some bubble and inside of that bubble, you only have Bedrock Edition Minecraft YouTube, this is like some mind blowing stuff right here. Spectator mode is amazing. You can fly through the world, look at blocks, find things, spy on things. Oh, it's great. Without spectator mode, I would have never known that this amazing, gigantic, breathtaking Lush Cave was here. Lush Caves are great, but it's not even the main reason why spectator mode is so good. The main reason can be summed up with one word. Hardcore. With all of the parody work the devs have been putting in over the past few years, Minecraft is closer than ever. It's definitely still not perfect, but we've come a long way. Coming in the Minecraft 1.19.20 update is a huge update to zombies. Before 1.19.20, zombies on hard difficulty were actually like kind of insane. Every single zombie that spawned in Minecraft on hard difficulty would be able to break doors. Now, at first you might think, oh, okay okay that's normal but no it's actually meant to only be 10 percent of zombies before this bug was patched out of the game you could replicate this pretty easily by placing a villager inside of a door trap like this and placing zombies around him all of the zombies would swarm over to the villager and start breaking the door and that well to that yikes, yikes. As you might know, Minecraft Java Edition has many things. For example, right now, a stronger warden and also insane gold farms on top of the nether. Bedrock Edition also has some things. For example, the salmon. Look at how gigantic this salmon is. But for Bedrock Edition, it's not just the size of the fish that is different. Before the 1.19.10 update on Bedrock Edition, fish actually had double the amount of health that they have on Java Edition. On Bedrock Edition, for the longest time, fish have had a total of 6 health. In 1.19.10, that gets cut in half to 3 just like java with such a big focus on parody nowadays you would think that all of the big features inside of the new updates would be the same consistently every single time right well wrong very surprisingly the 1.19 update came with a lot of significant parody differences two of those big parody differences have to do with one of the most important things in the entire update the shrieker right now before the release of bedrock 1.19.10 the ancient city the warden is actually way less dangerous than it's going to be and way less dangerous than java edition in theory, you can have an infinite amount of wardens summoned into your world at once, but there is a limit. That limiting factor is the Shrieker. When the Shrieker is trying to summon a warden, it does a little check. On Bedrock Edition, in 1.19 right now, that check is 96 blocks. 96 blocks around the thing and make sure there's no other wardens. If there is a warden somewhere within 96 blocks, the warden spawn fails. The Shrieker's detection range of being cut in half to 48 means you're going to have to be a lot more careful in 1.19.10. Also coming to Bedrock Edition soon is Shriekers giving out darkness a little bit more consistently, and Shriekers will now implicate players from farther away. You're gonna definitely have to be careful. Because of course, if you're not careful and you set up a Shrieker, it's Warden time. And oh boy, let's talk about the Warden a little bit, because the Warden is getting buffed big time, very very soon. For starters, the Warden roaring thing, that's not always a sign of an attack on Bedrock Edition. Sometimes the Warden will roar like that, and then just decide to not really attack or do anything. It just screams because it's angry. That's changing. Consistently, after a Warden roar in Bedrock 1.19.10, the Warden will charge and will attack whatever it's mad at. Also coming to a Warden near you, when you hit the thing, it will automatically add 100 points of anger to the anger skill. If you want to know more about the Warden's Anger Scale, then definitely check out the Everything Series episode on the Warden after this video. Pretty much all of that information is how the Warden will work in 1.19.10. If you have moved, successfully made it away from the melee attack range of the Warden, well, the Sonic Boom. The Sonic Boom is going to come out, and the Sonic Boom is now going to be stronger than ever. Look, we can basically turn this into the dog meme at this point. If you think you've experienced the Warden on Bedrock Edition in 1.19, <laughs> you, you really have experienced nothing, I'm sorry. For some reason, the 1.19 update on Bedrock Edition is shipped with a weaker Sonic Boom attack. You see, the Sonic Boom is meant to completely ignore all armor enchantments. And entirely. 
and ignoring the enchantments is terrible. Really, really bad news for us because it makes the Sonic Boom attack insanely, insanely deadly. That's how it'll be really soon. Existing since the development of Java 1.17, it's kind of crazy how different the Skulk Sensor is on Java and Bedrock Edition. With this thing being one of the oldest wild update features to be in the game, you would think it would be very polished, almost identical on Java and Bedrock. Well, well, look, that's not the case here. There are so many differences between the Skulk Sensor on Java and Bedrock that this could literally be a list of its own. We're going to go ahead and combine these all into one. The Skulk Sensor will now be able to detect a big drip leaf state changing in Bedrock 1.19.10. Do you like hose? Well, so does the Skulk Sensor. In 1.19.10, the Skulk Sensor will be able to detect when a block is hoed. Surprisingly enough, it's not all getting more dangerous in 1.19.10. In 1.19.10, the Skulk Sensor will not be able to detect when a held item is equipped. And that's good news, because that sounds insanely broken. Here's a fish inside of a bucket. When I drop it down to the ground, the Skulk Sensor will now be able to detect that and convert that into a signal strength of 12 if hooked up to a comparator. All of those fish tricks? Well, that's gonna happen in 1.19.20. Whoa, no way, that's an end crystal inside of the world, that's insane. I wonder what would happen if I, let's say, just went ahead and shot that end crystal, and it exploded. Hold on a minute, is this another parody difference? Will this not explode? <laughs> what? Alright, well look, let me put it this way. If this thing were to actually explode, the Skulk Sensor would know and give signal strength 15. Did you know dispensers can dispense TNT? Well, the Skulk Sensor knows. The Skulk Sensor will now detect that action too, and give a signal strength of 12. Creeper explosions next to a Skulk Sensor are now also detectable too. That's signal strength 15. Also coming to the game at Bedrock 1.19.20, we have a couple of bug fixes having to do with this thing and basically how it prioritizes vibrations. Look around here, we hate the Wandering Trader. Biggest nuisance of all time, not good. If we go ahead and flip things over to nighttime, then the Wandering Trader is going to drink a bucket of milk or eventually it should drink a bucket of milk. In nitpicky, of course, of course you would be. Fine, we set it to midnight and... All right. Ah, ha, ha. Well, look, it looks like there are still some issues with the Wandering Trader on Bedrock Edition, so we're just gonna have to imagine that this thing just drunk milk. It drinks milk at nighttime to unfortunately hide itself from all of the bad things in the world, like the zombie. Yes, there you go, you did it. You're a little bit slow, and that's fine, but you drunk the night vision potion, and you're gone. I think I was saying milk the whole time. I didn't mean it. Milk comes in at daytime. Before the next update, Wandering Traders would actually just remain invisible during the day. And I kind of like that, but that's not exactly how it's meant to be. At daytime, the Wandering Trader will now drink milk. I think I just learned something about this, though. Look at this thing. On Bedrock Edition, it seems like the Wandering Trader just drinks milk when a zombie gets close to it to, like, flee. Like, look at that. That thing? I mean, it's actually kind of genius. I hate to say it, but, like, that's smart. That's some strategy right there. Here's a Trader Llama fighting a zombie and unfortunately going away. That's so, so sad. sad. If something sad like that happens, well, check the creative inventory. Brand new Trader Llama spawning. The Trader Llama and the Wandering Trader have now actually been split into two separate entities, which is good because that's what they are. And the Llama, the Llama did nothing wrong. It's, it's all the Trader. Did you know that Wandering Trader spawning is actually a little bit different on Bedrock and Java as well? At least until 1.19.20. In 1.19.20, Wandering Trader spawning changes. You play Bedrock Edition. Let's say you're down in the deep dark cave and you're inside of the ancient city and then suddenly, boom, Wandering Trader spawns? Yeah, that's absolutely terrible. Trader inside of the ancient city while you're trying to sneak around? Yeah, definitely not great. In Bedrock 1.19.20, the Wandering Trader will no longer be able to spawn underground, it won't be able to spawn in water, and it won't be able to spawn in lava. I don't know about you, but I think spawning in lava, I would give that a pass. If you've had the time to play 1.19 and explore your world a little bit, and had at least a little bit of luck, then maybe you've come across the brand new beautiful mangrove swamp biome. If you've come across the biome, then you know all about the brand new mangrove trees and all the blocks that come with it, like the leaves, the wood, and the roots. Did you know that the roots are actually a pretty interesting building block? Especially the muddy mangrove root. Did you know that you can rotate this block? Or at least you're supposed to be able to rotate this block. Rotatable mangrove roots will make their way over to Bedrock Edition in the 1.19.20 update. If you literally never build or just build boxes, you don't really care about the aesthetics, it doesn't matter to you. But if you do care about the aesthetics at all, oh man, this change, this is huge. So check this out. Mangrove roots right there, mangrove roots right there, and then we'll go ahead and place them like this. We've got stripped dark oak wood on the bottom and the mangrove root. Right now these colors, the tones, they're like perfect. But we go ahead and level that up even more with maybe like a little bit of mud on top of the transition right there from the wood tone all the way to the gray tone. I mean, look, we've never had a transition that is so smooth from brown to gray. It's perfect. On a small scale, maybe not the best looking, but on a bigger scale, you could actually get a little bit more fancy with this and break it out into like cobble deep slate and then smooth basalt or something like that. It's great. This is an amazing change for builders. Another one of the biggest parody updates to come to Bedrock Edition in years is coming very, very soon. This time around, instead of a game mode, it's a command. The Locate Biome Command. 
The Locate Biome Command, if you don't know about it, is absolutely amazing. If you're playing Bedrock Edition in, let's say, 1.20, and theoretically they add a brand new biome and you want to find it, well, Locate Biome and then, I don't know, Bamboo Jungle. Maybe that's the new biome. It's that easy. The Locate Biome Command is so useful for locating different biomes in your world. Maybe you just create a brand new world and you want to check out the new mangrove swamp because you've never seen it. Well, Locate Biome in 1.19.10 is the way to go. Eventually, once the devs get around to a little bit more cleanup work on Bedrock Edition, the Locate command should be removed entirely and replaced with either Locate Biome or Locate Structure. It's time for life hack with Waddles, so let's go to the nether. This is a full legal disclaimer, if you try this thing out and it doesn't work how I show it off right here in the video today, well, that's because it's Bedrock and there are bugs. If you get hurt, it's not my fault. So here we are, we finally made it to the nether inside of one of the worst, most underwhelming nether spawns of all time, but it's fine, it will work. Step 2, Survival Minecraft. Step 3, put gold boots on. Step 4, find containers inside of Survival Minecraft. Step 4, locate a piglin. With gold on, the piglin doesn't care about me right now. If I go ahead and jump into this boat right here and then access the inventory, the piglin is mad at me. I don't know if you can hear that, but the piglin does not like that at all. It's very, very mad, and that's because I'm inside of the preview for 1.19.20. You see, our piglin friend will be getting a little bit smarter, a little bit more aggressive when it comes to chests inside of containers in the 1.19.10 update. Before 1.19.10, you could actually go ahead and place a chest boat down, jump into the chest boat, check out the inventory, and the piglin doesn't care. In 1.19.10, don't jump into the chest boat and access the inventory because piglin gets mad, but in 1.19.10, if you position the chest boat with a piglin like that, it literally can't hit you. <laughs> I don't know why either. It has just given up. You're not good. Kind of like this piglin. Like, you just can't do your job exactly how you're meant to. You're not good. You find yourself in a lot of bad situations. Eventually, once that situation truly sets in, you're going to see a brand new death screen. In the next Bedrock update, you will now get a cause of death in your name on the death screen right there. So the warden, unfortunately, in the nether, eh, yikes. When you go ahead and respawn, if you check the chat, that message will also be sent in chat too. Please take a seat, especially if you play like Java Edition or something, I really don't want you to fall over. So, you know me, I mainly play Java Edition, I play that on PC. When I play Bedrock, I play it on PC too. I literally never play it on mobile, specifically on iOS. Before I learned this information, I was in the Dark Ages, essentially a caveman. But before Bedrock 1.19.10 on iOS, if you wanted to hear the music in the game, you actually had to download the music from the marketplace. Like, what? 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 Like, literally, you had to go into the marketplace, find the music pack, it was free, and download it to, to actually experience the music. Now, I'm pretty sure this means, like, the game music. Not really the jukebox discs, but either way. <laughs> what? That's insane. The feature is now, lads. Buckle up. You know how it goes, we don't make the rules. Every single time a new tree is added to the game, there is always a brand new type of leaf. Consistently, that rule is never broken. Azalea tree added in 1.17, mangrove tree added in 1.19. And both of these trees come with leaves. One of those types of trees comes with literally two brand new types of leaves. Amazing stuff. When those additions happened, there was no attention to detail paid to the Ravager. The Ravager was not able to break those types of leaves. It will now be able to break those types of leaves in 1.19.20. But look, it's not just the leaves that the Ravager is getting stronger against. It's also a lot of the other cave update plants, like Spore Blossoms and Drip Leaf. Unfortunately for those of you who have decided to protect your village with a wall of flowering azalea leaves, it's not going to cut it anymore. Not for long. I think I made my point that there were a lot of surprising parity differences between Bedrock 1.19 and Java 1.19. Surprisingly, the alley is actually pretty consistent between the two versions of the game, except for item collection range. Item collection range is being changed in Bedrock 1.19.10 for the alley. Unfortunately for the alley, this means a slight nerf, actually. On Bedrock Edition in 1.19, the alley would search up to 64 blocks away from that thing for an item to pick that item up and come back to the player. It's meant to be 32 blocks, I guess. That's changing. I guess there was also a way to duplicate items with the LA in Bedrock 1.19, which, <laughs> would you look at that? 1.19 is still out, so you go ahead and look into that if you want. But yeah, I guess you can duplicate items, but not in 1.19.10. Finally for us today, a very simple one. The Skull Catalyst in Mud. The Skull Catalyst had some problems with Mud in 1.19. In 1.19.10, that will not happen. The Skull Catalyst will now be able to take over Mud if a mob is taken out near that Mud. 20 updates making their way to Bedrock Edition sometime soon. That's it for today's video. Though a lot of these updates are a little bit smaller, some of them are actually pretty significant. Like, of course, Spectator Mode and Locate Biome. Those are the obvious ones, but some of the other ones, maybe a little bit less obvious, like the Wandering Trader spawn change, those are huge too. If you enjoyed this video, then consider checking out this one next. In that video, I show off five really cool Skulk machines. Most of those machines work on Java and Bedrock Edition too, which is great.
Leave a like on this video if you'd like to see more Bedrock content. It's been me, your boy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone.